the amount of locks that you have does not determine on how thick or full your lock is. back to my channel if you are new here welcome and if you are a returning subscriber what's up babe thank you so much for tuning back in so as you guys can see your girl she's a lock bay okay i am a lock girl i've officially been locked for not like for nine months y'all but today i wanted to talk to you guys about some things i feel like you should know before starting your lock journey so if you are about to start a lock journey or you want to start one in the future then you should definitely keep on watching so before you start your lock journey you want to know how exactly it is that you want to start your locks there are different type of methods that you can use to start your locks i chose the comb coil method it's honestly just what i'm used to and it's also the method that my loctician does so i just kind of went with it there is no reason that i chose to go with the coil method it's just it's just what happened you know but you can also use the two strand method I've also heard people start locks with braids I don't really know the method behind each factor whether if there's a reason you should do the two strand method the coils or the braids I like the coil method it reminds me of a lock before it's actually a mature lock so that is just what worked for me now you also want to know what type of parts it is that you want to have with your locks because baby once you start them you in it for the long haul unless you gonna take them down and do it again which there are certain people who take their locks down because they are not in love with the parting style so really pay attention do your research on what type of parts that it is that you want you can do square parts you can do diamond parts, you can do C-shaped parts, which is exactly what I have, where it just kind of looks like a half moon. Also, you can just do freeform parts where you'll just have different parts throughout your hair and they just kind of do what they do, which also leads me to my next thing. If you're someone like me, I wanted my parts to be neat, y'all. I wanted them to be done right the first time get you a good loctician or a stylist, okay? I know there's some people who start their locks on their own and you know, they just do their thing. That was not me, okay? <laughs> I wanted to have my parts to be me. So find you a good stylist, find you a good loctician. Also, that is so important if you're not going to be retwisting your hair yourself. I wanted my locks to be subons.com. <laughs> Now, I'm not saying that your locks won't be bomb if you do them yourself, of course. Maybe one day I may even get there. But for now, you know, I love the way my loctician does my retwist. I love the fact that she palm rolls them in the same direction every time. I feel like that helps me to just have a neat lock, you know? Now, also you should know that your hair density is going to determine how thick or full your lock is. So if you have a low density hair, you may have a finer lock. Whereas you have a high density hair, you may have a thicker lock. There is nothing that anyone can do about that. It is honestly just all about the density of your hair. It doesn't matter how many locks someone has because I know when I started my lock journey or before I started my lock journey, I was so interested in knowing how many locks someone else has. But honestly, babe, it does not matter. I have a 120 locks. I've seen other people that have 120 locks and our locks look completely different. So the amount of locks that you have does not determine on how thick or full your lock may be. It's honestly just based off of your density. Now, I do feel like if you do go with bigger parts, then you will probably have bigger, thicker locks, you know? But if your density of your hair is fine, it may just not be a thick lock. So pay attention to that. If you do have low density hair and you want that thickness or fullness to your hair, I would probably suggest doing a smaller lock. So that way you can just have more of them. But if you do have high density and maybe even smaller locks, you can possibly still have thicker locks. Now, before I went on my lock journey, I was looking at other people's budding process. And when I tell y'all my budding process does not seem to be going down that same direction, <laughs> 
I learned that the budding process is honestly based off the texture of your hair. I've seen so many people when going through their budding process that they would have this little thick area in the middle of their lock and then the bottom may be a little finer. So the thick area would be their hair budding. Y'all, my hair, it ain't doing that, okay? <laughs> I really think it's just based off of the texture and honestly the size of my locks because my button process is looking nothing like theirs. I wish I can show you guys. There's like certain locks that are starting to bud. Like what I'm noticing with my hair, it's just getting, it's just getting frizzy. And then the frizziness is coming all the way down and then it's kind of integrating into itself. But it's not like an average, I, I didn't even want to say average because like I said, it's really just based off of texture. But it's not really like what I've seen the other girls on the gram locks be looking like. Like, it ain't gonna be the same. So your budding process may look way different than what someone else's budding process. Also, the budding process can take a long time. I'm currently nine months locked and I still have so many locks that haven't budded all the way. Or I maybe even have like just a few that have actually honestly budded. It can honestly take your locks six months to a year to fully mature so. So I feel like this is very important to know. Okay, listen up. Do not compare your lock journey to someone else's lock journey. I need you to know that you are unique and you were specially designed. You are a one of one Don't start your lock journey thinking, I'm gonna do what she did, I'm gonna have the same amount of locks that she has. Baby, no. Your locks may still look completely different than what someone else's locks may look like. Don't compare your lock journey to someone else's because it's supposed to be different, y'all. We have different textures of hair. Like the back of my hair is a completely different texture than the front. The back of my hair is super tight curls. I would say I have a 4C type texture in the back. And then the front, literally just this little area here, it's more of like a 4B type texture because my curls aren't as tight. So even my hair looks different. Like the front of my locks and the back of my locks, they look different. So that's why you cannot compare your locks to someone else's, because baby, we were uniquely made. So you ain't gonna look like them. Period. So the last thing I wanna say to you is to just be free. What I can say about my locks, y'all, is they have taught me not to care so much about things. Like I used to be the type of girl where I put so much just thought and neatness into my hair. Now that I'm on a lock journey, I just wake up, I go, I feel free, y'all. Like the freeness that my locks have brought me is just... So enjoy your journey, be patient, and trust the process. So that pretty much wraps up this video, babes. I hope it helps you out on your lock journey. Good luck on your lock journey. Don't forget to share this video with someone who may be going on the lock journey, you know, because I do this for y'all. I do this for you, boo. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next